Hello everybody, happy Saturday morning makes. Um, this is the second part of what I'm uploading today and what I'm going to try and do is film a tutorial showing how to create this Christmas tag. And this is a tag that uses the little jar dies, the new jar dies from My Creative Time, as well as um, the gingerbreads from the stamp and die set uh, that I showed you. Let me pull it out really quick. Um, so it's, it's using this, the jar dies called Chunky Jar Dies Revised at My Creative Time. And uh, I'm using this little two inch jar die, um, the fabric piece and then the handle piece, okay? And uh, actually I need the handle piece out of there. Uh, and it's also using this largest die right here in the in this uh, Valentine's set from My Creative Time. And this one is called um, the Cookie Cutter Dies um, and Cookie Cutter Stamp Set. And I'll show you what the stamp set looks like too. So it's this stamp set, if you remember, and then these dies. And the only exception is, is I'm not gonna be using the faces that from this stamp set. Instead, I'm gonna use my Peachy Keen faces and a white gel pen to decorate these. Um, but you can definitely use this stamp set and stamp directly onto them and then cut them away from the heart to create the three cookies that I'm gonna be using. Okay, and I actually, I'll show you what I'm doing. But anyway, those are the sets. And, uh, and again, I'm also using a tag from Lily of the Valley, the LOTV Digi Shop on Etsy, and it's from this Baked with Love Tags stamp set. It's an A5 polymer set from Lily of the Valley stamps. So I have all my pieces cut out to create these tags, okay? And uh, we're gonna go ahead and put one together. I'm gonna ask that if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments and I will try and answer them. Um, I get a lot of requests for um, tutorials on how I do things. So that's why I'm doing this is to actually give you a tutorial to look at. Um, but tutorials are not easy to do, so bear with me. Hopefully I can get through this without um, having to stop and uh, start over again or, or refilm this. This is actually the second time I'm filming it and I'm hoping that this time I can make it all the way through. Okay, uh, so for the purposes of um, making the tag, you, you need to cut three things um, or five things initially. You're gonna cut, um, oh, and I forgot to show you the, the other thing you need is a little oval die to create the center of um, the opening of the jar. And for that, I use the jar label dies and stamps from My Creative Time. This is from her newest release, and I use this one right here, the outside piece of this, okay? So that is all the products. So the first thing you do is you're gonna cut out a bunch of pieces and you're gonna need two lids, um, and I'm using the fabric lid, so two of those. You're gonna need a decorative piece that's gonna go on top of the 110 pound backer, if you will, and that's to decorate so that the inside of the jar looks pretty. This is gonna be the back of your tag that we're gonna stamp a Christmas sentiment on. And then this piece, where you cut the oval out, you're going to glue, you're gonna take a bead of glue, a thin bead, you guys, very carefully, and you're gonna glue a piece of acetate onto here. And normally what I do is I cut this piece first. So I'll cut six of these, say, six jars and six ovals out of the center. And then I'll glue my acetate with a thin bead, just cut a square of acetate shaped like the jar, and I'll glue a thin bead here and I'll let that dry. So I'll put the acetate on and then let it dry. Then what I do once I have that on there is I take a very small scissor and the key is to have a small scissor and you're just gonna lift up your acetate where it's glued and I'll show you on here as much as I can. So the glue line is solid now and you're just gonna take your scissor and cut around the acetate to cut it away because you don't need it all. Now, if you have a really good die cut machine, you can die cut your acetate with the, with the die it probably won't cut all the way through, and then you can use your scissor to do a rough cut. But what I find is using a thinner acetate and just gluing it and then using a small embroidery scissor to trim around my glue line is faster than trying to trim out perfectly 
the acetate in the shape of the die. But if you have a die cut machine that will cut all the way through the acetate, go ahead and do that because you'll have a perfectly matched die cut. Okay, but this is just how I do it and it's really fast for me. So that's the way I, I'm used to doing it. Um, but do whatever works for you. And again, if you want to make a shaker that's thicker, you can buy Dollar Tree foam core board or other types of foam that are on, on the market. There's a really good Etsy style of foam that a lot of people use. I know that uh, Scrap Diva 29 and uh, Jen, who is Strawberry Cream 39, they have um, usually that foam linked in their drop down menus. But I tend to do things uh, without necessarily doing the foam. Um, mainly because I want this tag to be mailable, so I don't want to make it too thick. So it's just three layers, and I'm not popping it up and adding shaker components, but you could do that if you want to, okay? So, um, you know, there's so many different things that we can do creatively. So anyway, once you get your acetate trimmed down, then you're ready to start gluing your tag together, okay? So you're gonna pick whatever background paper you want for your tag. Maybe we'll use this one this time. And then what you're going to do is you're going to create your backer um, by gluing the red paper um, onto the tag. Okay, so let's do that really quick. And uh, a lot of times I will definitely um, also uh, edge all of my die cuts with some tea dye ink or some vintage photo distress ink. But and, and the way I do that is just with a little sponge dauber. And you guys have seen me do it before. I'll just go around and edge all the, the edges of my die cuts. But I'm not going to waste time on this video doing that just because I think most people know how to do that. Okay, so I have that in place. And the next thing you need is you need your little gingers that you're going to glue inside here. So I'm going to take this die cut and I'm going to use one of my little peachy keen faces from my PK... 3000 um, stamp set from uh, from Peachy Keen stamps, okay? And I have shown that set many times, but I'll grab it really quick and just show it to you. This stays on my desk always. It's always on my desk. This is PK3000. It's Jill's Favorites Assortment. There's also a Jill's Bigger Favorites Assortment that has the bigger faces in it. But this is a set that I concepted with uh, Kathy at Peachy Keen that has uh, a size face for every single ginger that I had in my stash at the time that we designed this a couple years ago. And so I keep this on my desk because anytime I need a face, I know I have a face in here that will fit. And uh, there's lots of other wonderful face stamps on the market from different companies as well as from Peachy Keen. And I do have a lot of other sets, but I always have this one on my desk so that if I need a face really quickly, I have it. And it just sits in a little cubby on my desk here. So the face I'm going to use today is one of my smaller, like quarter inch faces, um, or maybe it's a half inch. And uh, I'm just going to stick this on to my mount and then I'm going to use this to stamp these little gingers that you see right here. Okay. And again, this is just a blank die cut from, um, from that, from that, uh, my creative time stamp and die set that I showed you. So we're going to go ahead and, uh, just lightly stamp a face onto each one of these. So, and it is harder to do things on camera, so my placement of stuff may not be perfect, but this is just to show you guys what I do. So there's my little faces, and the next thing I'm gonna do is grab a little pink um, Copic marker, and I'm just gonna add some pink cheeks. Okay. And then I'm going to take a white gel pen, and I just use um, these little jelly roll pens, um, which a lot of you have seen. There's also some Kuretake pens I use, lots of different white things that you can use. But um, I'm just going to go ahead and, uh, and decorate these, and uh, I'm going to add some hair up here at the top of this one. And I am just coloring with the white gel pen to add these white details onto the gingers. And this is what you see in the tags that I did. All of these tags have that white detail. And uh, you could certainly do this in other ways. You could use the stamp set that comes with um, this particular uh, set of dies, but um, I'm just doing it this way for a couple reasons. Num number one, I really do like the Peachy Keen faces, but I also just find this easier and quicker and also kind of fun to decorate the gingers 
the way that I want to decorate them. So, um, and you can keep it as simple or as complex as you want. I'm just doing a zigzag line on this one. And I hope I'm, I don't know if I'm in frame and you guys can see. Let me see. Can I zoom you guys in a little bit? I'll zoom in a little and move up. So, oops, all my stuff just fell off my desk. <laughs> all right. Never a dull moment when you're trying to do, um, whenever you're trying to do a tutorial, it's always interesting what happens. So I'm just going to go around with this little zigzag line all the way up. And again, doing this on camera is a lot harder than when I do it off camera. But, um, you get the idea. And then I actually use these hearts in a different tag. Um, I used them in this one. And uh, you can see some of the hearts that I decorated. And uh, these were just samples that I made really quickly for Saturday morning makes. Um, just to give you guys a Christmas tag idea. And uh, now I'm just taking my little embroidery scissor and I'm just going to cut around the edge of these gingers okay and then I'll trim the heart so that the edges are flat and I can use that as a cookie also okay so I have my little heart cookie which I'm not going to use right now but I am going to use these two little gingers that we just created with their little cheeks and I usually also do dot the little pink cheeks too oh it's so warm tonight that my my gel pen is being a little bit finicky but I'm going to go ahead and just put some little dots on the cheeks. And uh, I don't think that the pen I used isn't very pink. Let's see if I can grab something a little more pinky. Let's just do, add a little more pink to these. There we go. And that'll dry and it'll lighten a little bit. Okay. Oh, they're very uneven. Anyway, not as perfect as I normally do, but you get the idea. And uh, so now what we're gonna do, we have our, where's our glue run right here? So I'm gonna get rid of all these other pieces that I cut out for now, just to get them out of my way, um, because we don't need those. And I'm gonna scooch you out again, and uh, we'll keep going. So, get all this out of the way. All right, so those are all my extra ones that I still have to make. And, uh, oh, and I think I lost my handle already. <laughs> no, there it is, okay. So, so now we have our little cover and our little gingers. And so I want the gingers to appear in the window um, underneath this. So what I wanna do is figure out where I want them and then glue them in place. And that actually, I think, looks pretty good. So you, you know where you want them. You can just pick them up and add a little glue behind each one and then stick it down so it's in place. So we'll go like that and then make sure that we've got them done the way we want them so that they'll look good behind the window. And do I like that? I'm gonna tilt this one a little bit closer. I want them to almost kind of look like they're overlapping and holding hands in there. So, all right. Now, if you wanted to, you could die cut, like I said, a foam piece and add shaker bits. But for the purposes of this Christmas tag, I'm not gonna do that. I just want it to be a simple tag and uh, more of kind of a prim style, if you will. And there's our little handle. But first, we're gonna glue this down and then we're gonna glue um, our little fabric pieces. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue around this so that I can glue it down. And you do not need a lot of this. Tombow Mono Glue sticks really, really well. So the thinner the bead that you can create of glue, the better, I think. So we'll put that over the top. And you could certainly do the jar in red if you want instead of craft. But I do like um, kind of the earthy tones. So there's that. And we're just gonna hold that in place and make sure it's lined up until it's dry, okay? So there's that. 
And then while that's drying, um, I am going to grab some of the fabric pieces. So now we're gonna glue these on for the top of the tag. And we're gonna do one each direction. And we could actually, I don't know, should we do them? Should we do it matchy-matchy on this one? Or do we like the contrast? I think I like the contrast better of the bigger ones. So I'm gonna do it that way. So this is what we're gonna do. So we're just gonna take a little bead of glue and we're gonna run it, just a bead of glue along the base of this where it's gonna connect with the top of the tag. All right, and we're just gonna hold that in place, make sure it's straight on there and sort of meets up with where it needs to meet. And then we'll turn it over, make sure it's straight. And you're gonna do the same thing with this one and glue it to the back. So we're just gonna put a thin bead and line this one up with the back, okay? And these are not perfectly symmetrical. Um, there's one little piece that usually sticks out at the end, but if anything is ever sticking out and it's white, you can just use your brown inks to darken it and then it's less noticeable, but these actually lined up perfectly. They lined up really well. So I think we're okay. I'm gonna try and just make sure. All right. Okay, so there is our tag. And you'll notice on these ones, what I did was I tied some string to Jingle Bells and I added these little tags to them from the LOTV Digi Shop. Um, and then I tied a, I, I punched a heart hole and tied a string through here. So another option, if you want, is to use the little handle, okay, like this. So I thought we would try something different in this tutorial, and I would glue the handle in place and use the handle since Emma made these adorable handles. And uh, we'll see how this looks. So I'm just putting a little bit of glue on that bottom part. And you could definitely double this up. Um, for the tutorial, I'm not doing that because I only cut one right now. Okay, so I'm just gonna glue that on and that creates the little handle. And then from here, you could decide how you wanna decorate it. So one option would be to go ahead and glue the tag on, you know, and maybe what we could do on this one, rather than using ribbon, what might be cute, because this could literally hang on the tree just like this as an ornament, um, is maybe just tie a bow through this opening with my little hole punch. I just have a really tiny hole punch and it fits perfectly through this little hole. So I'm just gonna punch that out. There we go. And then um, you can just make a little bow with just a piece of twine or string, whatever you have on hand that you wanna use. You could also cut a little bow die. Um, Emma from My Creative Time has a really sweet bow set and she has all different size bows. She also has a bow die in this um, jar set that would work too. So there's lots of possibilities for however you wanna decorate it. Um, you know, I just try to give you guys ideas, especially when I do these tutorials, because there's a billion possibilities on how you might want to create your Christmas tags. Um, and I just was working on these tonight. And as I was die cutting some more pieces, I thought, oh, I should use the handle. And that would be so cute to tie onto a Christmas tree with that little handle. So, um, you know, oops, oh, I just untied it. It figures. <laughs> I've got a little bit of glue on my finger and it was just enough to pull that out. Um, so there we go, there's that. And we're almost at 20 minutes, so I am trying very hard to finish. And that's actually making me mess up. Let's see. That's the only thing with this string and on trying to look through my camera to tie this. I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna quit looking at the camera and just try and tie it because I'm having problems doing it the other way. You just do it. 
it's always so much harder to be looking through the camera. I know Anna, who is Serenity Creations, when she's doing jewelry, I'm always in awe that she can make jewelry on camera. And she's the one who taught me how to make bracelets and stuff. And I've got to get some jewelry, some beads out and stuff and do some bracelets this summer. I love making really pretty bracelets in the summer. I don't do it as much in the winter, but for some reason, I think it's because I have more time in the summer. I'm, I usually take some time off to spend with my son in the summer, um, which is what I did right now. And it's always nice to um, just do some jewelry and beading while I have the time. So there's my little bow. I think I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller actually. Anytime you're trying to get a bow to, to lay straight, I'm gonna show you a trick that I learned. You hold on to the tails and then grab the top and hold the top and pull and it'll help you get your bow straight. So if you're ever having time, a you know, hard time getting your bow to lay straight, that is a trick you can do. Just pull on it so that it'll lay flat. All right, so I've got it the size that I want and now I'm gonna cut the ends so that it looks cute. There we go. And then I'll just glue it onto here, okay? There we go. So there's my little tag. I think I'm, I could use a pop dot. Do I want to? No, I don't think I'm going to because this might get used as an ornament. And sometimes if you do a pop dot and you don't add enough glue to it, it eventually wears out and then they might lose the tag since I'm not tying it on. So I'm gonna actually glue it so that it's firmly in place. And this one happens to say five cent gingerbread cookies. And this was one of the sentiments that I suggested for that set when we were creating it. And it's, um, they also did a five pence gingerbread cookies if you're from the UK. So I, they have five pence cream cakes and different things. And then they have a lot of things for the US too, like um, gingerbread cookies and sugar cookies. So there's our little tag. This is what the back looks like right now. You, you could add another heart tag on the back. If you want the back of the ornament to look identical to the front, you could add a heart tag here. And then what I usually do on the back is I take some of these smaller sentiments that I have. This is the um, mini Christmas greetings stamp set from My Creative Time. Some of you might have this set in your stash. And uh, what I do with this is um, I pick out a sentiment for the back of my tag. And I think, did I stamp some of these? I did. So here's what it looks like. Have yourself a Merry Little Christmas. And then if you are if you were gonna use this as a tag, it, there's room here for them to write to and from if they want. You could also put it to and from below. But because so many of my family members take these and use them as ornaments, I don't put to and froms on my tags anymore. I used to always do it. The other thing you can do is you can tie a to and from tag and um, make a little one and then pin it at the top or something. Um, or even pin it to the back of the bow so that there's a to and from. But I don't do it anymore. I just leave them plain so that if they do put it on their tree, it doesn't have anything other than the sentiment on the back. Okay, but you see what I mean where you could put another heart tag here that comes through to the back. The other thing you can do is just use your tea dye ink and tea dye that brown so it's not as showy when you turn the tag over. Okay, and you can see that I tea dyed the front of it. So, um, so, those are uh, my ideas. I think, let's see, what do I want to have a ho I think on this one, I'm going to use the Have a Holly Jolly Christmas. So I'm going to set that little stamp aside. We'll put this one on here. Um, the nice thing about having these stamp blocks that have lines on them is you can line your sentiment up and make sure that it's straight on the block before you stamp it. Okay, so we're going to just, uh, let me do one more dip in here. I want to make sure I have it nice and inked up. And uh, anytime you're inking up a stamp, always check your block. Make sure you don't have any extra ink anywhere that you don't want it. All right. And then we're just going to put this on here. So have a holly jolly Christmas is on the back of the tag. So there is our completed tag. Again, I have not inked the edges because I was making this on camera. I'm at 24 minutes. So I think I'm gonna let you guys go. Let me add just one other thing that I did in my first video that I'm not doing in this video. And that is that when, when you're tying the bows, like I said, and if you're trying to make a bow and it just isn't working, a lot of you over the years have asked me, how do I tie such nice bows? Well, the trick is really in that thing that I just showed you about pulling tight. So you tie the bow, okay, and it usually looks messy right after you tie it. So you're gonna straighten it once, pull it tight, and then do that again, 
and pull tight. And what I do is I hold on to the two the straps at the top and I pull like this, okay? And then what that does is it just helps to set the bow the way you want it, okay? And like this one is twisted, for example. There we go. So I'm gonna do that one more time and I'm gonna pull. Okay, and then you can zhuzh it up one more time to get it to the size you want. I usually want it to be fairly small. Okay, and then pull down and you are ready to cut to the size that you want the tails to be. Okay, so if you were to cut it, let's go ahead and use our good sharp scissors and I'll cut here and I'll cut here to get my tails. Okay, so we just made the little bow and holding it, like I said, and pulling it tight really is the key. And then anytime you have an, uh, a ribbon that will fray, you just take your, um, your lighter and just light the edge just really slightly to get a good, um, to stop it from, from fraying. Okay. Oops. And that one's a little bit uneven. You can see this needs to be trimmed a little bit further. So I'm going to do it one more time and uh, try and do a little straighter cut because the other side isn't quite as angled. And it helps to have a ribbon scissor that you only use for ribbons, but my ribbon scissor's in the other room, so I'm using my embroidery scissor. All right, all right, so there is our little bow. And for example, if I wanted to, I could use a bigger bow on here, but um, for the most part, I've been doing those bows with this ribbon tie and gluing it on like this. So this one still doesn't have its tag yet. Um, and it's the one that I made in the video that I'm not gonna use because um, it just, I was off camera too much in that video. So hopefully I have done a better job in this one. We covered a little bit about making ribbon bows and then we did this sweet stamp or sweet tag. And probably the last thing I would do is just to warm this up so that it looks cuter is just add a little bit of tea dye ink all the way around as well as on this handle just to make it look more like wire. You can also definitely make these handles out of some cardstock that is foiled like a silver cardstock and uh, that would be also very appropriate. Um, I tend to like sort of the prim look and I would rather do almost like a rusty handle because a lot of the jars that I own from the antique malls have a rusty tone to them. So what I would probably do is make my handle and then before gluing it on, ink it so that it kind of has more of a rusty wire look to it. And you can, at Factory Direct Craft, you can also order rusty wire to use in your projects like this. And I do have some in my stash somewhere. So, um, so that is our little project, um, the little cute gingers from My Creative Time. Uh, from the LOTV Digi Shop, the Sweet Tag. This beautiful die set is, of course, from Emma's shop from My Creative Time. And uh, the, these papers are some papers from Paper Tray Ink that I had in my scrap bin. And I try to use up my scraps first before cutting anything new. This beautiful stamp set is from My Creative Time 2. And again, it is called the Mini Christmas Greetings stamp set. Mini Christmas Greetings. And this one does have a to and from. So if you do want to add a to and from with your sentiment, you could do that also. So um, that is my little tags for today. Um, I just think these turned out so, so cute. And uh, I also made this larger one using the, the larger um, jar die from My Creative Time, uh, as well as her gingerbread man with a peachy keen face, her ginger chef hat, her bow die, and her beautiful jingle all the way um, spatula die. So all of these fun little Christmas tags are my Saturday morning makes for this episode, and I hope the tutorial is something that helps you. Um, I didn't add the bells. I do have two jingle bells sitting here, and I think what I would probably do is just tie them onto the handle uh, right up here so that they're right above the tag. So I'll probably do that after I get off camera, okay? So that's everything, you guys. I hope you enjoyed seeing these, these just these adorable, 
<laughs> Christmas tags, you know, it's my favorite season is Christmas in July. And I'm really looking forward to trying to get a lot of Christmas tags made throughout the month. Um, if nothing else, at least on Saturdays, um, I am busy dealing with estate issues and stuff from my father passing away. So I'm not sure if I'll have as much time as I would like, but I am looking forward to seeing what all you are creating. And I just want to add a quick reminder about the new Facebook group that Jana set up that's over. She actually, it's an existing group that she had that she's allowing us to use for Saturday morning makes over on Facebook. And I will put the link down below. Um, I tried to do it last weekend and I was having problems uh, getting into the group and everything. So we got that all squared away. The group is up and running and I hope that you'll all begin posting in it. Um, if you have any trouble finding it again, the link will be down below. And Jana, I believe, will also link to her channel. Anybody else that is linked up to it that's making a Saturday Morning Makes video and you're posting to that Facebook group, if you drop the link in your drop-down menu, that'll help spread the word about the Facebook group. I appreciate all of your help. There's been a lot of questions about whether we're still going to continue to post to Instagram, and we are. We're posting anywhere you want to post. We're just trying to allow um, some of the people that maybe won't get seen because they're brand new to doing this and maybe they don't have a lot of followers. Um, the way Instagram changed their algorithm, um, only the recent posts uh, show up on the Saturday Morning Makes feed now under the hashtag. So that's why we're setting up the group on Facebook. It just gives us more continuity with having a place where everybody can post their posts and they'll be seen on the feed on the Facebook group. So um, type in Saturday Morning Makes, um, the hashtag over on Facebook, and it should come up as a group. Um, if not, again, you, you'll be able to find the link down below. I want to thank everybody that helps make Saturday Morning Makes so very special. Each one of you has an artist in your soul, and creating art is bliss in a very difficult world. It's something that brings our souls joy and happiness. And uh, I know this community is so important. All my friends, Anna White and Elise and Rhonda and Patty and Mary and Linda and Lorraine and all of you that comment that maybe don't post anywhere, but you are always watching and leaving beautiful comments. Thank you. Thank you for being part of this community. Every single person, everyone that I'm not even mentioning, Andrea, Nettie, Martha, Mo, Melissa, uh, Christine, um, the people over in the UK, friends in the UK. Uh, there's so many people, Susie Tootsie Tucker and her friends, everybody. I just am so appreciative. So um, thank you. And I can't wait to see what you're all creating this week. All right. I'm looking forward to seeing lots of Christmas joy. Bye now.